Hey friend, hope you're doing well today. Sandra Villavet, Glucose Studios, promoting human-centered design, which includes human-centered design for leadership. And I just wanted to share a little bit about leadership today. My inspiration comes from Rosalind Carter, and she had a quote that says, a leader takes people where they want to go. A great leader takes people where they don't necessarily want to go, but ought to be. Rosalind Carter, Jimmy Carter, the president of the United States, his wife, she was a very um, active humanitarian globally who advocated for mental health. And that connection of leadership, mental health, and the science around me today inspired this conversation. So what is the science around me? Well, in the East Coast of the United States during this time, I am recording this session during the fall, beautiful fall. Uh, we have the changing of the leaves, the changing of the weather, changing of time, the clocks, change, 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 lots of change. And it just so happens to be Friday, November 1st, 2024, which is about four days before the 2024 U.S. presidential election on no November 5th. So lots of changes. And when we're talking about leadership, we're talking about self-development and having empathy for ourselves so that we can develop ourselves so that we could become better people and then therefore we can lead and possibly be these great leaders who are leading people where they ought to be on this challenging path during these challenging times. Okay, so setting the tone, setting the stage, setting our inspiration. That was my intention. And my intention today is to share how I often have used science in the world around me as a metaphor or an analogy for me to ask myself questions so that I can become a better person. So using science as a self-development tool, essentially. And really, fall is my favorite season and I wanted to share something I learned years ago when I was working as a naturalist or a science educator at a nature center. I did not know this about trees, and I'm assuming that maybe a lot of people don't know this about trees in the fall. But do you know why trees show their colors in the fall and what is actually going on? I mean, people assume, I think, that the leaves are changing. We don't necessarily know why, but we know that we may assume that the tree is dying in a way. And because we see in the wintertime that the tree is bare, if it's a deciduous tree, a tree that loses its leaves, not all trees lose their leaves. Um, but if it's a deciduous tree that loses its leaves, it's losing its leaves and looks kind of dead in the winter, the winter's dead. But there's so much more. There's so much more depth to that. There's actually a lot of purpose and reasoning to the change that occurs in trees. So what's actually happening is in the summertime, trees have green leaves. And green is the color of chlorophyll that works with the sunlight and does the process of photosynthesis. So the green in the leaves is essentially what helps soak in the sun and oxygen, which is food for the tree. So then if the green leaves go away, what's what's happening? So what's actually happening in the fall is the chlorophyll and other amazing nutrients that are in the leaves are moving from the leaf to the branches and the trunk of the tree. So it is changing its chemical format and moving into the tree's trunk and the wood part of the tree and becoming a form of antifreeze. 
So the tree is changing and moving in order to magically, not magically, but miraculously, I think it is, um, form a way of creating an antifreeze so that the tree doesn't die during the winter. Any of the water components that are in the tree don't freeze and then die. So essentially, things are changing and moving in order to preserve the safety of that tree. Because then, as we know, the, the winter is harsh. We also get a lot less sun. And then in the spring, as we start to see more sun, that tree comes back to life. Maybe it's a form of hibernation like some animals do. But I think it's such a magical analogy for life is at the same time, what is going on with that tree? It is radiating magical, amazing colors, reds, yellows, oranges. I have never met a person that has looked at a red or orange or yellow tree during the fall and thought, hold on, that, that is an ugly tree. I Most people think that the beauty... The colors are just like radiating in the sunlight and they're so beautiful. So as this tree is changing and preserving itself, like what some may think of like going in and kind of contracting and slowing down and at the same time, it's radiating all this beauty. So there's so many questions I can ask myself, especially about my emotions, to help me do some self-development that will help me possibly deal with change better. And so I can ask myself, or I have been asking myself, how can I radiate beauty or from a different for me, beauty is important or power. Those are meaningful words, but other folks may say strength or um, a sense of, of being handsome, possibly, or looking good. How can I show my, like, my swagger while I'm dealing with something challenging, while I'm having to work on kind of conserving myself or preserving myself. So that's kind of the tension point of a lot of stress, right? So when we're put into stressful situations, when we have to take care of ourselves, to preserve ourselves, to make sure that we're ready for change, how can I still maintain that I'm still showing my personal strengths, my personal power at the same time? That's a great reflection. I've actually been putting that in my journal for the past couple of weeks as we've been going through fall. I ask myself so many questions. What, what are, how do I feel when I'm kind of contracting and having to preserve myself during different times of change? There could be positive feelings. There can also be some more negative feelings. There could be anxiety. And how can I address those feelings in a mindful way um, that I can feel those feelings, but just also know that change has emotions and it's part of change and it doesn't, it's always moving. It doesn't stay with us forever. Just like looking at a tree as an analogy, like it's just part of the cycle of life. It's just part of it. And how do I feel when I'm radiating my, my power and can I potentially challenge myself to radiate the most beautiful red tree glowing in the sun that everyone's taking pictures of, even during a time that seems very tumultuous, very challenging, or there's a lot of change? How can I challenge myself to be that beautiful red tree? You know, and sometimes I'll put that image in my mind too. You know, if I'm stressed and I'll close my eyes and work on my work on my mindfulness and just imagine that I am this beautiful red tree, no matter what. 
<clears throat> and feel that just natural. This is just all part of it. So I hope that you have other questions for yourself, um, thinking about the science of trees and the science of change of a tree um, from fall, transitioning in fall. Um, I challenge you to reflect on this and to use it as an analogy to empower yourself to learn how to strengthen yourself during change. And go back to this quote again, that a leader takes people where they want to go, but a great leader takes people where they don't necessarily want to go, but ought to be. Honoring Rosalind Carter, who was an advocate for mental health, very aligned with this conversation. Where could we go as we strengthen our mental health and as we personally strengthen our mental health, how do we become great leaders that can influence and inspire others to go where they ought to be, to push them to, to also radiate their beautiful red tree in the sun during their times of stress, inspiring more people to deal with change in a more graceful and mindful and balanced way in order to feel that they matter in this world and continue to shine their light no matter what. A little bit of self-development leadership for you today. I hope I inspired you. Go outside and breathe in the beautiful air and stay in the light.